There we go. <laughs> the camshaft is positioned so that the closing rocker can go all the way up. It's best to leave as much or all of the shafts inside of the right hand uh, engine case. We have this tool and the tool here to push it down. So these are good to go uh, after a little bit of blasting to make them fresh and clean again. So, as you can see, we are uh, well underway in phase two of this uh, 1975 Ducati 750 Supersport restoration project, uh, which means that we're going to take it apart completely up to the last nut and bolt. Uh, so, that is uh, ongoing work. And as you can see, uh, we're ab about to move the, uh, the frame of the, uh, of the engine. Uh, and we have uh, all the parts that are coming off are inspected and uh, uh, all prepared. As you can see, unsorted uh, uh, all along which uh, uh, surface treatment they're going to get. So these are all parts that are going to be uh, re-chromed, uh, zinc plated. We have parts that are going to the paint shop, uh, parts that are going to be polished, uh, parts that are going to be uh, blasted, uh, some disc grinding going on. So, uh, well, we have a, a whole range of uh, preparation to do before we can take it to the next phase. Uh, the frame will be uh, worked on when it is uh, on the workbench, uh, so taken off of the engine. Uh, still some welding and uh, some uh, lugs that need to be taken off uh, to be done. So, uh, well, good progress there. And uh, here we have the bodywork that came off the bike that is now ready for the paint shop as well. Well, like we explained in the previous video, uh, how we uh, set it up in the first phase, now taking it to the next step. And, and here are some parts that are coming uh, along for the, uh, the engine disassembly. So what we're aiming for in this phase of the project is that we uh, uh, get a full assessment of the project. So with all the uh, subcomponents, like say the uh, brakes or the suspension or the frame or the engine, uh, of all these subcomponents, we have a full picture of what is needed, what uh, parts need to be replaced, what work needs to be done. And that is also the phase where we can uh, uh, project the costs of the complete project and have a, uh, a full idea of what it's going to be uh, towards the end. Uh, so that is uh, currently in progress and uh, we'll let you know how uh, I will go along. So another day here at Back to Classics and today is the job to get this 750 Supersport engine 1975 uh, disassembled. I'm not sure if we're going to get the, uh, through the end in one day because there's a lot to do, in fact, as we can show you later. Uh, so this engine is coming apart, and in the process we're going to check all the little bits and pieces and uh, to prepare them for the uh, final rebuild that we're going to show you as well in a later episode. So, um, well, let's uh, get our hands dirty. So first, a uh, little update on the disassembly process, or stage two of this, uh, of this project. As you can see here, it's, uh, well, it's a little a bit of a mess. But uh, in these crates are all parts sorted for polishing and chrome plating and painting. And then we have the frame and some of the bodywork we're going to use. Frame still has some work to do. Uh, some brackets need to be welded on there. So we're going to do that in a later stage. As well as some parts that need further addressing when it comes to uh, welding them. And sanding and preparing them further. Brake discs to be uh, ground and uh, finished before they can be painted as well. And as I showed you earlier, it's here where we have the engine ready for disassembly. So that's up for now. So I removed the, uh, the clutch and all the, uh, the parts. Need a little bit of cleaning and checking if we see if we can uh, use them. But for now it looks to be okay. And we can now move on to removing the flywheel and ignition rotor. Uh, that's one piece together with this uh, uh, primary drive uh, gear that uh, drives the clutch housing. And we can remove that with the special tool that is uh, well, specific for this type of uh, ignition system. And uh, well, that goes in these little holes here. 
with these three pins. Get a little bit more room. Let's see if we can get it off. No. The crankshaft needs to be positioned correctly in order for these three pins to get through. There we go. <laughs> As I said, these things can be quite stuck on the uh, surface here of the, uh, the conical shape, but we got it off with a helpful tool. With the drive side disassembled, we have the clutch here. Uh, no, nothing to worry about at this stage. It all looks very good. Even the plates, uh, but the, uh, the steel plates as well as the uh, Fiber plates are in, in good condition, can actually be used again, as well as the springs and the spring cups. Uh, up and basket are in very good condition. I've also checked the gear from the, uh, from the crankshaft, all is in good order. And next is the ignition system. As we discussed before, this is the original Ducati Elettrotecnica ignition system, and these are problematic. Uh, there's an article on our website where I discuss in depth how uh, problematic these things are. Uh, in fact, it is our advice that if you want to actually drive the bike, it is better to fit a uh, aftermarket digital ignition system uh, than to use this one. Of course, the, uh, all the parts that are here are in good condition and can be kept with the bike. So if someone wants to return it to original ignition, it can always be done. But for this uh, project, we're going to advise the owner to go to a uh, ignition system that is much more robust and uh, and you can actually actually use it so that's uh, now done as you can see here on the engine this side the drive side of the engine is now empty and we're now going to continue to the cylinder heads There are the cylinder head nuts, and these have been painted silver, <laughs> which they shouldn't. There it is, number four. And the washers that go underneath them. Let's get a magnet. Now with a little wiggling, it should come off. There we go. Okay, let's move on to the rear. You can see, as a preparation, when the engine was still in the frame, we loosened up the cylinder head nuts, which makes the life much easier because when they're stuck and you have the engine on the workbench, you're struggling to get them off, so it's quite an easy job now. You can loosen them by hand at this stage, or at least D3. Now we know that the engine has been apart, or at least the rear head has been uh, off. As you can see here, this is actually the wrong way around. So someone uh, disassembled it in a wrong way. 
and again with some wiggling washers and again here we go oh there's the fourth washer and removing the o-rings the oil channels okay so into further investigation of these cylinder heads the rear cylinder head disassembly i've checked the uh, valve clearance of the, uh, openers are 0 0.1 for the inlet and 0 0.2 for the exhaust which is it's at least it's not too tight so that gives us a good idea that at least the engine was uh, was taken care of uh, in a good way but um, well in order to uh, make sure that the valves are uh, seating properly and we have to check the valve guide so it needs to be assembled uh, disassembled completely so uh, let's move on with that and first remove the bearing cap for the uh, camshaft We at least have uh, three original nuts, sorry, bolts, right here that we're going to use, and one non-original, which we're going to throw in the bin. So, we need another special tool for this job, which is uh, this one. You see here are two pins on each side, on which the rockers rock and these pins need to come out and luckily you got the thought of that and they made a threaded piece inside those uh, those rocker uh, pins and in order to get them out you need this tool well that slides out easily now we have to be careful because there are shims on either side of this uh, this valve rocker and we need to catch those before they are on the floor of the workshop there we go And there we go. So there we have the valve rocker, which has some good chrome surface fill, some slight wear, not too serious. As you can see, these 1974 and 1975 models, 1976 as well, they have, you have these polished rockers, which is nice. Uh, technically not any better than the later ones uh, that are uh, not polished but, uh, but nice and it's original for 1975 and we like original so we measured the valve clearance before we uh, started the disassembly and all is correct correctly set so that gives us an idea that the engine was looked after maybe a little bit too wide but hey I'd rather have it too wide and too narrow and now we have the valve shim on top of the valve stem that goes off like that and now we need to get this off A special tool as well with the camera is in the way bloody camera so hope you can get a good view of this now we need to make sure that the closing rocker has a uh, position sorry the camshaft is positioned so that the closing rocker can go all the way up we have this tool, this handy tool here, to push it down over the valve stem so we can remove these tiny little valve collets. There we go. 
Hope you can see that. And then we have the shim for the closing rocker. Which means that now we can push down the valve out of the center head. Which makes me wonder whether that valve is still straight or crooked. Well, we have to look at that later. But first, let's remove that rocker uh, itself using the same tool as before. This one doesn't slide out that easy, probably because of that spring that's underneath there as well. And again, we have to be sure that the shims There's our one shim. Probably on that side, it's still on here. Got it. The return spring for the closing rocker and the closing rocker itself. So, again, let's see what that does. Good chrome surface on there. And again, polished, just the way we like it. I think the valve stem was touching the closing rod at uh, some stage, because it does move up and down well. But we'll leave it in there for now. So we can check the valve guide and seat after we have uh, disassembled the other side. Exhaust. So let's move on. So we removed the uh, rockers, the valves and the pins and all the little stuff Get back to that later when we uh, see what we can, uh, what we think of that, and uh, judge the quality of the valve guides and seats. But first, let's remove the uh, the upper bevel gear and the camshaft. Now, if someone has been in here. Because these should be Allen head M6 screws, uh, and they're not. They're slotted hexagon nuts. Well, sorry. So. Well, they need to come off anyway, so let's get them off, if we can find a fitting screwdriver. <coughs> Not only... <coughs> can you believe it? Let's give it another attempt. Well, at least that one is loose. Drastic measures. Let's see if this helps. So, this attempt finally got on. Why do people do that? It's shortened as well.
So the step washer was folded twice over two sides of the hexagon nut, which is a little bit overkill and not needed. I always do it once and only where the timing mark is on the nut for the, um, sorry, on the, the gear on the camshaft. So, well, this should come off easily now. And for that, again, we need a special tool. to hold the camshaft in place. That's right. So it's this tool and it slides over here and it holds the camshaft. So that needs to come off. And we can put this here. I'll swap the camera around so you can see what I'm doing here. So we will be removing that nut in order to take out the camshaft. Now that is a 22 millimeter, but it is less than threat. So please be aware before you attempt to put on force in here, it's Screws the other way around. There we go. There is the nut. The tap washer. Which we will be renewing. Gear, camshaft gear, the upper bevel gear set. Stuck on the key. There we go. Right, stuck, key is stuck in here. Fiddle that out later. And there are some shims probably. Yes, there are. Behind there. Just one. So now we can take off this housing and remove this as well. Original screw. And another original screw. We like those. The knurled M6 screws. And another one. And yet another one. So that's good. Sometimes need a little convincing. Here we go. There's the bevel housing. If bearing needs to come out, we can do that later. Old gasket. There's a bush there on the camshaft. We can 
can see it. Now we can take out the camshaft. Here we go. So that's all up for review. The cylinder heads have been completely disassembled and we are actually very pleased with what we have found apart from some very minor things which we'll discuss but both heads front and rear are original to the 1975 Supersport 750 with the 8 mm bore uh, so let's dive into it a little deeper as we have seen already the uh, rocker and camshaft are all in a good condition perhaps some very minor surface wear but nothing we cannot take out with a little bit of sanding and maybe a whetstone uh, both of, all of them are original polished correct 1975 specifications well the valves uh, we're going to replace as we always replace them uh, they are good to go in fact but well we'd like to if we doing all these efforts to rebuild the engine in this way uh, let's fit new valves into new guides as we can discuss later on and well you saw struggling with it and let's move it a little forward uh, that is something uh, which I have never seen before uh, because these things never wear uh, but for some reason uh, a larger thread has been inserted here which is the reason why someone fitted these hexagon bolts uh, in a larger thread so these are now no longer m6 uh, but this is easily replaced we have hundreds of those lying around so no use in trying to uh, improving these so these this goes out and fitted back with original m6 screws uh, which is a minor thing of course uh, upper bevel gear uh, both sides are in good order and as well as uh, other minor parts and things moving on to the cylinder head itself as you can see I have cleaned out blasted the combustion chamber as well as the uh, the exhaust port to see if there are any cracks or other damages well none found in fact also the threat on the exhaust port uh, where the ring nut goes in is in good condition sometimes we see that damaged not in this case as well as the uh, uh, the hole for the uh, spark plug all in good condition so these are in fact good to go except for the valve lights that we'd like to replace especially the exhaust both cylinders are uh, are worn uh, a little bit beyond the tolerance and fit, fitting new valves uh, we'd also like to fit new valve guides if only it was for the reason I will show you now because these valve guides that Ducati used at that stage uh, were meant to have a o-ring inside for the uh, for sealing the valve stem and that is a system we don't like very much we more well we much more fond of the later version with the uh, the, the top hat uh, stem seal that goes over the uh, valve guide but for that we need to fit other valve guides with a small recess where we can fit the uh, the top hat valve stem seal so um, it, by replacing the valve guides we can also improve on that and make sure that the valve uh, is sealed in a better way and we don't have to use these uh, these well these o-rings that we don't like because if you try to fit one in that's a hideous job and as soon as you fit the valve inside the guide then you actually going to damage that o-ring already so that's something we're going to advise the client so new valves new guides uh, seats are good to go and that will be the end of this restoration when our heads are concerned so here is the front cylinder head same story here 
no big issues found with rockers. Camshaft, everything in good order. And cam sort of cylinder head itself in good condition. So again here, new valves, new valve guides, and we're good to go. So we're now going to ship out some of these parts. We're going to uh, sort them out directly. Uh, the cylinder heads are off to our, for blasting. That is done with a specialized company that does that for us uh, using a combination of water and uh, media blasting which gets a very nice surface, which you can show you later, and some other parts that need uh, polishing, like these, and this one as well, and this one, of course. So, let's sort things out and carry on with the disassembly. Uh, that's probably for tomorrow, when we're going to get into the rest of this engine. And hopefully get it done. So, up to the next job. Moving on with the uh, 750 Supersport disassembly. We're now going to take off the cylinders and pistons and see what we find there. So, follow along. So trying to fiddle out the circlip, there it is, which means we can push out the gudgeon pin from that side, which is a little stuck. There we go. Removing the gaskets.
So let's see how they measure up. Time to measure everything. And we have the cylinders here, uh, measuring devices. So let's start with the, um, the cylinders. Prepared by uh, measuring device. And this is 400 undersized, sorry, oversized. And at zero in this direction. So this means the cylinder is oval and well by 400. So clearly this was bored at the nominal size of 80.0. Uh, so we have horizontal and vertical. We have the cylinder. We have the piston. And we have the clearance. So started with the vertical cylinder measured at 80.04 with a remark that it is oval. Now for the horizontal. Point one. Point zero four again. So this one, same story. Yeah. Again, eighty point zero four, and again it is oval by four hundredths of a millimeter. So move to the pistons. And I wonder if these are original. Normally, the 1975 750 Super Sport was originally uh, delivered with uh, Borgo pistons. And Borgo pistons always have an inscription on the bottom that says AE. But these don't have them. They certainly look more or less the same, but I wonder if they're original. I don't think they are. So, measuring them up. Uh, this is set to 80.00. That is 13 hundredths undersize. So 13 hundredths, which means it's 79.87 millimeters. Put it in the wrong place. That's vertical, of course. 79.87. Let's see what this is. 8 undersize, meaning it's 79.892, which gives us a clearance on the horizontal cylinder of 0.12 of a millimeter and on the vertical cylinder of that's three, seven, nine, which is slightly above what we want, and quite a big difference between the horizontal and vertical. So we're probably going to advise to fit oversized pistons in this case, going to 80.4, but we'll have to discuss. Check it a check. Still got sound. And we will now continue with the distribution. So first removing the upper, sorry, the lower bevel gears. These are all fitted inside a single housing with bearings, etc. in it. 
as we can show you later. There we go. That's for the front cylinder. These guys that they tend to be stuck, but we can get them out later. Moving to the rear. And the rear. These brass uh, plates, they are used to uh, get the height correct, so it's a sort of a, acts as a shim. And we always keep them together. You see there is already one on here as well. In order to uh, reassemble it later on, shimmed correctly. Presuming that it is shimmed correctly right now, but uh, we'll check it and redo that later on anyway. So Now this uh, whole plate can come off. Removing the whole of the distribution all at once. This was the clever design bit Fabio Taglioni did in uh, 1975, the year this uh, bike was made as well. And the idea was to lower the production cost of the, uh, of the bevel drive engine. As compared with a round case, it is uh, quite a lot of easier to, uh, to assemble this uh, setup, as it is indirect and you can have it all together much faster without having to putting it in and out again as you have to do on a round K750. But apart from this uh, upgrade, it is remarkably dissimilar the uh, round case and the square case engines. On a technical level, of course, the design is a little more modern with this, uh, with this bike and angular which was the way forward in the 1970s. So these are the bearings on that plate. This is a bearing face which will not come off easily. At least we can get the distribution out for the front cylinder. And for the rear. It's stuck somewhere. Probably around the keyway where they usually get stuck. Nope, still won't come off. There we go. Still not. Finally. <laughs> there we go. And there is the key. Nope, still no. There we go. So, again, up for review. So the timing side of the engine is now also completely disassembled, as we can show you here with all the parts. And again, it looks like uh, it looks to be a very easy engine rebuild. This one, as we find, only parts that are in good order. Uh, whole of the distribution here, nothing to worry about, gears all in good shape, so uh, no big issues. Oil pump, uh, well, there all looks to be okay. One could argue the gears are not completely new, but then again, I have seen far worse on, uh, on these oil pumps. 
and this can definitely be used again. We perhaps we can discuss this a little bit further with the owner, but I think this uh, this is good enough uh, for uh, for the rebuild. Uh, oil pumps are not bad, in fact, of these square case uh, engines. Uh, breather parts all in good shape, as well as the alternator. So up to the final step of the disassembly, which will be to take apart the crankcases. So we're about to split the cases on this uh, Super Sport engine and uh, well, let's uh, dive into it straight away. Laten we gewoon naar de loop hoor. First we're going to take out all the M6 screws on this side. We don't see a uh, factory seal here, which means the engine has probably been opened before. Which was to be expected, because most uh, of these bikes are now nearly 50 years old. All have been uh, opened up and some work done. That is nothing to be afraid of. But it would be, have been nice if the original seal was still there, but not the case. So there we have all the M6 screws taken out. We can move on to the other side. So that is all the screws taken out. Now we can see if we can Get a little bit of movement. Yes, we get some movement. There we go. So we're about to split the cases and in order to do that we need to Swing the kickstart lever uh, so that the bracket where it is attached to is, um, is cleared. I can show you that later uh, when we look inside the crankcases. But you always need to have a uh, kickstart lever with you when you pull these cases apart. And if all goes well, we should be there by now. There we go. Yes, it's past that point. There are a lot of bushes and shafts where it can get stuck to, as is the case here. It's best to leave as much or all of the shafts inside of the right hand uh, engine case, but it is not always possible when things are too stuck on the left side, as is the case here. Lay shaft is stuck inside the, uh, the bearing. Which is unfortunate.
That's a big mess, but nothing we cannot sort out. <laughs> so let's clear it up a little bit. So you saw me struggling with the, uh, with the lay shaft of the gearbox that was stuck inside the, um, the bearing on the left side uh, crankcase. But we finally removed it and I put it back together again the way it was with all the shims in place. So uh, it's now time to take it apart further and inspect the uh, individual components. So let's first remove the... There goes the main bearing. <laughs> Again, something that is stuck here. One crankshaft. We'll go over that later. These main bearings, they can be put back together again. So there's no big issue, but although, although we mostly replace them with new ones when we uh, rebuild an engine. That's all looking good. Okay. These were al already loose whether that's coming from me splitting the cases or not, but this is the, uh, the cup for the spring on the uh, kickstart shaft. Was not put back uh, the way it should be, but again, we can go on to these later. What we first are going to do is to take out the uh, selector forks and the selector drum. One pin, making sure that the shims are in place. They are both sides. There's the lay shaft with its gears. And now to remove the main shaft, we first need to remove the kickstart shaft. And that is fixed with a M8 screw where the spring is attached to. Watch your fingers when you remove this uh, screw because the spring will eventually get loose. There we go. There is the kickstart shaft again with the shim on this side. So put that back. And here we have the main shaft. Okay, so these are all up for inspection, but let's first uh, clean out the crankcases. So after a bit of struggling, we have uh, finally disassembled the engine uh, including the gearbox all seems to be in good order the crank cases are actually in a perfect shape as we can show you beautiful crank cases no damage whatsoever maybe a little dirty on the outside but we can uh, sort that out with uh, with blasting I'll show you the other side little secret some people may not know. This here is a, uh, well, it's, it's preparation to fit a starter motor. 
and only on the 1975 Super Sports is there no bronze bush fitted to the crankcases. Of course, it doesn't have a starter motor, so there's no need for a bronze bush. But on later models, even though they don't have a starter motor fitted, they always have this bronze bush, not on a 75. So, another giveaway that this is the original and crankcase in very nice shape. Uh, as well, the other side. Build numbers check out as well, or the same on both sides, which means they are a pair matched in the factory. So these are good to go uh, after a little bit of blasting to make them fresh and clean again. Then what we have here is the original crankshaft, also seems to be in good shape. Uh, we need to get this apart and see what we find on the main bearings, sorry, the big end bearings. Uh, most of the time they do need some attention. It's a critical component and uh, known to be of a little bit of a, a problem for Ducati engines, uh, but I'm sure we can sort that out. The crankshaft itself is in good shape. Uh, all the, the conical shape here for the, uh, for the flywheel, as well as the main bearing surface, all in good order. Original Conrads specific for the super sports these, these double ribbed version here very nice conrad so we hope to be able to reuse those moving on kickstart shaft in good shape no big issue there and moving to the gearbox well that is the reason probably why someone has been in there uh, the gearbox has been worked on and what we see uh, the main shaft is uh, mostly original and is in good shape. We don't see any broken off teeth or something or pitting uh, or other damages. So no big issue there. The lay shaft is where they did some work. What we found is that the lay shaft itself is of an older type, probably a 750 round case. And uh, these have a circlip uh, they, they lack a circlip compared to the later ones and uh, not a well the issue is that the between fifth and fourth gear on the lay shaft there is a uh, later addition of a circlip which also meant that the design of the fifth gear was changed uh, during the time to make it a little bit narrower and what we see here is a combination of parts from different models a lay shaft from an earlier model then probably the original uh, fifth gear and that's why they constructed a bronze ring to get the height to the correct specifications not original and uh, well, I can argue whether we'd like to put it back together this way and another thing that we found is that the first gear on the lay shaft is a three dog version and in 1975 still they use the six dog now you can technically there's nothing wrong with this you can uh, use three dog and six dog gearbox parts uh, in the same gearbox no problem but again from an originality point of view you can argue that this uh, gear uh, should be six dog so there's some things to discuss here I think the gearbox is good as it is here um, the one making these uh, changes was knew what they were doing that is uh, certainly the case but it is not the original specification or not completely the original specification and well now that we have gone so far as to open up the engine and rebuild it completely we have to see what we uh, what we can do here perhaps uh, replace the lay shaft for a original one and then we can uh, at least uh, build it back together so something to discuss with uh, with the owner so only one job left and that is to get the crankshaft pressed apart the final parts of this disassembly process of our 75 project is the crankshaft and going over that a little bit in detail first of all the crankshaft webs are in very good condition no problems there no damages no defects so that can be very well be used in the uh, in the rebuild uh, we did find that the alignment was off uh, 
by quite some margin. And in fact, we measured a tenth of, uh, uh, of it being untrue on both ends. So uh, that is not the way it should be. Uh, so we can address that. But what we also found is the pair of conrods that was fitted to this, uh, this crankshaft. And as you can see, these are slightly different. Uh, this uh, piece here goes through a little bit further than this. And also the width of this one, it's a little bit wider around here compared to this one. And in weight, that actually turns out that this one is 35 grams heavier than this one. Uh, and that is not good for a crankshaft because we need to be, need to, we like to have things in balance. Uh, so clearly this was not the originally fitted Conrods uh, as they uh, came out of the factory. Uh, they are original Ducati parts, however, so someone uh, went into the, uh, the parts bin and, uh, and fitted these. But, um, well, there's some, some things we need to address here. The clearance, on the other hand, so that's the clearance between the, uh, the conrod, the pin, and the bearing, uh, was in good, uh, was within good measure. So it would measure a total of uh, 0.026 millimeters of clearance, uh, which, is, which is quite good. But still, um, we are confronted with this problem with these conrods. Now, um, we could easily fit a new uh, Carrillo set of Conrads or some, some other uh, manufacturers. They do make them still. But uh, given the fact that this is a very uh, rare 1975 uh, Supersport, uh, we would like to have a original factory crankshaft in there. So um, we went over our parts that we have in stock, original parts, and we found this. This is a matched pair of Conrads, as you can see here. Uh, weight is uh, more or less the same, a few grams only, but that is uh, something we can sort out easily. Uh, needs a little bit of polishing, but we have measured uh, this set as well and uh, found that it is a very good match with the originally fitted pin. Uh, and of course, new bearing cages, as you can see there, and new bearer rollings, rollers. Sorry. Um, so, with a little bit of work to do on, uh, on the pin, just dress it up a little bit, uh, as well as the conrods, uh, give it a little polish. And using the original set of webs, we are confident to have a, uh, a beautiful, original 1975 crankshaft ready for this bike uh, when we start the engine rebuild. So uh, that's actually for our next episode. This uh, uh, is the final bit of the disassembly and uh, assessment process. So uh, first up is now to discuss all our findings with the, uh, with the owner and come up with a plan for a complete restoration from start to finish, uh, actually from this point forward. So um, that's up next. Uh, well, that about the crankshaft. So this concludes phase two of this project. As you can see, uh, everything is uh, uh, taken apart and uh, sorted uh, to go f to the next phase, which is the uh, shipping out and uh, waiting for our respective suppliers uh, for all kinds of parts that need surface treatment. And whether that is uh, painting, as you can see there, uh, polishing, uh, chrome plating, zinc plating, uh, aqua blasting, uh, these are all done uh, externally. So we will now continue with uh, shipping out these, uh, these crates with parts to our uh, respected suppliers. So this concludes phase two of this project as well as this uh, video episode. Uh, we hope you uh, enjoyed it. Uh, stay tuned for the next episodes in which we go completely rebuild this complete bike. So uh, be sure to check that out. For now, thank you very much for watching. Toodle doki. See you next time.